Hey guys, so um, it's Memorial Day today and I wanted to go ahead and give you guys some updates because I did have what I would equate to a PET scan, but it's a CT scan now. That's what my um, new care team does is CT scans, which I actually like better because it's um, quick. The exam is five minutes, you know, ten minutes at most, versus being, and you can eat, drink for the most part. I didn't eat anything just to be safe, but yeah, I mean, it's better. It's better. I like it. Um, yeah. So the medicine I'm on. Tridelby is different than chemotherapy. It's not quite chemotherapy, but it's administered like chemotherapy. And really, let me start with the PET scans and CT scans are similar but different, right? They both can detect cancer but they run different you know they're different scans um, the images and the people who read them are their people so they type the results right but the images may see the same thing so I had my CT scan and the results were posted um, I think, sorry, my nose is running. Let me go get a tissue. So no matter what treatment I get, whether it's chemo or Tridelby, um, every time I get administered drugs, these treatments, it makes my nose just run like crazy. Straight clear fluid, it's not nasty like snot, it's just clear fluid. But yeah, so I always have a runny nose for the most part. Um, but in the day, um, I'm going to repeat what I said before a little bit. These results that you're reading are typed by people, by people who have been trained to do their job. They see these things all the time, so they know what to look for. So they type with detail and they type with the intention, right, to be accurate. So when you read everything that's written, you take it for exactly what it is black and white black and white like it is on the paper and that's not necessarily how I'm gonna look at this pet this um, CT scan because if I were to look at it like that black and white on the paper I would say I'm quitting this treatment and I'm moving to something else I may quit this treatment for another reason but that's for another video um, so, the results. So the results showed that my pleura, where my cancer is, from my, um, the fluid. So you remember how I got my CT scan? I showed y'all I was crying, I was upset. So it showed that I have a small pleural effusion on my right lung, which is, that's what the malignant cancer is. But it's small. And when they say small, I believe small, because I know what they write when it's bigger than something that shouldn't be worried about. They write significant, moderate, or, you know, words. They said that they did see, I don't, I, I don't know the um, term for it, but there's a medical term, a collapsed lung. So, my lung is not expanding all the way. So, when I was sad in that video um, with the chest scan you know I was sad more about the reality of hospice and stuff but I was also you know sad about the PET scan you know or the chest scan and I was like I don't know what it is is it this or that it looks like it's both and I'm okay with that because it is what it is I know my cancer I know that the fluids gonna come back it's gonna progress um, you know, that's how it does. 
So I'm used to the fluid coming back and forth, back and forth. In the collapsed lung, it gives me certainty. Yes, I know this has happened to me. It is stuck or collapsed and trapped, whatever you want to call it. So yes, that showed up on the CT scan. So that gave me some answers there. Um, it did show increased tumors in my breast, which I, I knew was happening because um, I went and saw my um, breast surgeon. She ordered the mammogram and the breast biopsy, well, the ultrasound, and then they were decided to do a breast biopsy, which they're going to test for the tum tumors to see if they're cancer. And they are going to be cancer, but the only thing that we are worried about is we want them to be the same cancer which is hormone positive H, HER2 negative. If it's different, then we got a problem. We're treating the wrong thing. We got to change treatments. And so that's pending results. I had my biopsy um, Thursday before the holiday weekend. So that probably won't be in until later this coming up week. And then Tuesday, this tomorrow, I go see my pulmonologist, so that would be nice to talk to him to see what he thinks and considers for these um, findings, you know. And my Emory doctor is setting me up with a pulmonologist in their network um, so that I can uh, switch my care eventually, but for the time it will be nice to just get um, talk to my north side pulmonologist. And then it showed my peritoneal, I always want to say peritoneal, peritoneal area where my stomach is, where it spread there, was still active, but it has some trace fluid, which is very, very, very small amount, like you can barely see it, trace, you know, so I'm not worried about that right now, um, and then lip nodes are still inflamed, still large, but no significant changes there, and then it showed I have a new spot that's on my spine so it's in the middle of my spine my T10 T10 and they call it a lesion a lesion it's like a soft spot on your spine so it's not really a tumor it's like a soft spot they say it's you know so really you could say I have bone metastasis now so I have pleural peritoneal lip nodes and bone right you see I got four and then it showed I think that was it I think I hit the clip notes it was a lot more writing and it was scary because there was a lot of like but the initial um, impression that the radiologist found was that there was disease progression which meant that the treatment was not working so I was freaking out because I hadn't talked to my doctor and I'm crying I'm like again here we are another failed treatment another bad scan and then my doctor was called me that Friday before the holiday I was like I am waiting on the images from Northside so I can compare the images before we talk about this scan so do not because I, I messaged him on the portal that night before saying how worried I was he's like don't freak out don't make any like rash decisions until I get these images. So I called Northside myself and was like, they need these images. I need them before the holiday weekend. They sent them over and he called me and he was chipper as can be. He was like, oh my God. They didn't say, oh my God, but he was like, we just compared the images, the radiologist did, and they are almost exactly the same. He's like, just very, very small difference. He's like, almost exactly the same. And he was like, this is good. This is stable. He's like, this is what we would see. It's a stable scan. And I'm like, what? I'm over here morning already starting a new chemo. And he's like, I think we should stay with this treatment. I think this is keeping you stable. So, you know, because I got my scans early because of all the stuff that was going on with my chest and my breast. So I've only been on this treatment for two months. So they usually wait at least three. So he's like, I think we should give this some more time. So, this is when 
And I had, I had had trouble making this video because I knew that a lot of people watch me and they come to me for positivity, hope, you know, and not a lot of people have a lot of opinions. At least they don't express them in the comments. And if they do, you know, I kind of just delete them and move on because I don't like that negativity to affect me. I don't need that in my life. But I knew this to be controversial. And a lot of you say, no, man, it's not controversial. Trust your doctors. You know, he's happy. He's getting treatment. And this is when you come down to that debate of is, is it black and white? Is it disease progression? Because I have something on my spine now. Or is it trust your doctor? He's been doing this for years. He's going to know if it's progressed enough to stop treatment, you know, to move to something else. So it may be up for debate whether you trust my doctor or not. And that's up for you to decide on, you know, on your own. But what I've decided based off of our conversation and the fact that the radiologist went back in and amended the CT scan to say that it didn't show, the images didn't show progression like they had shown. And so for that, I decided to trust my doctors and stay on the treatment as planned. I was like, you know, that's great. Kind of like, cry with joy for there for a second you know because I made it through 12 months I'm on a I'm like a newborn now so instead of like saying like I'm 32 years old we're just gonna say I'm like 17 months so I'm 17 months going on 18 months since stage four so I'm beating the odds and so, when we're talking progression, you know, I don't know how many months I have left. You want to say, no, Amanda, you got years. Years, 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 years. I don't know. I, I speak in terms of months right now in my mind. Because I just don't know. Months is great for me because I can still count up to, you know, 50 months. And that's still years. So it's just about perspective, people. That's all it is. And then you can't tell me how to perceive my own reality because you're not in my shoes. How you perceive it is how you perceive it. And I support you because I'm not you and I don't live in your world. But yeah, though, that's kind of why I've had a hard time posting this because it's good news. It's good news, and I've had a hard time sharing it. <laughs> just so, uh, I just want to be a beacon of hope to people, and I don't want to, because I am so young to have this metastatic disease, it's not normal for people my age to get this. Hope everybody has a great Memorial Day weekend, and, you know, remembers what this holiday is about. My dad was lucky enough to come home from the war, the Gulf War, so I'm grateful for that and for those dads who didn't come home. This is a day that we remember them and honor them. So stay true to, our, stay true to the holiday and hope everybody spends time with their loved ones today. I'll see you guys later. Oh, and I think this came to me in a, um, I couldn't sleep and I um, thought maybe I could do this thing at the end of my blogs instead of saying see you later and that's kind of how we end it I thought we could end it with what keeps me up at night because you know I don't know if people really want to go inside the mind of a um, dying person you know stage four um, terminal and what keeps them up at night like what do they think about are they having an existential crisis all of the time? Well, I will tell you, 
each week what has kept me up at night the most. And if it's nothing, it's nothing. We celebrate and we say, yes, she's getting good sleep. But it's probably going to be something because my mind is always running. My inner voice is a little loud lately these days. But I'm just going to vaguely describe it in two sentences or less. If it's something that keeps me up at night multiple times in a week, if this becomes a what I'm going to call a gate, then I will make a whole video about it and explain to you how this subject keeps me up at night for hours. So this, that will be how we will end the blogs from now on. So what keeps me up at night this week the most thinking about dimensions? How we see them and how many are there? Oh, I forgot to say, see you later. <laughs> Love you guys.